Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. We are here at the second annual American Academy for Oral Systemic Health meeting at the Cleveland Clinic, and I have Dr. Dr. Yipping Han of Case Western Reserve University here with me. Uh, Dr. Han, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. Well, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about a tragedy, really, uh, mm -hmm. that, that can happen, uh, but you've published two articles about gingivitis or periodontitis and how it affects a fetus. Right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? The, the first paper was done when? In 2006, it was okay. published in Journal of Clinical Microbiology. Okay. And it was uh, a case involving a pregnant woman at the Metro Health Medical Center here in Cleveland. Okay. She came to the clinic in preterm labor at 24 weeks. Good. The hospitals did uh, repeated amniocentesis to rule okay. out infection, uh -huh. but they couldn't detect any infectious uh, agents. Okay. But she clearly had the signs of intrauterine infection okay. because she had a very high white blood cell counts and a very low glucose level. These are all diagnostic criteria for intrauterine infection. Okay. So the baby was born at 24 and a half weeks and survived. So preterm birth, but survived. Right. This one. Right. Okay. So we took the mother's amniotic fluid and uh, used a non-culture dependent, culture independent method. Uh, we call it a PCR for polymerase chain reaction. Okay. So we detected actually a lot of bacteria in her amniotic fluid. Which and was, and a it was a surprise. Very much a surprise okay. because it turned out to be a species that was had never before been associated with intrauterine infection before. Okay, uh, it's a species called a Bergiella. Okay, and it's a very common oral bacteria. So it's common in the mouth, but mm -hmm. not in the uterus or the vagina, where you would normally think this infection might come from. Right, because okay. the con conventional belief was if the mother has an intrauterine infection, the most likely source is from the vagina, so the right. bacteria just ascend. Right. But in this case, Bergiella is not part of the vaginal flora, but it is part of the uh, oral flora. Right. And so using DNA fingerprinting technology, we found the exactly matching clone in the mother's oral flora. Right. And so this is a, a first case linking oral bacteria to preterm birth. Now tell us about the second case, which was widely publicized in the media, where there was a, a, a stillborn. Right, this case was published in 2010 okay. in Obstetrics and Gynecology. Uh -huh. This, uh, the outcome was not so good because it's a stillbirth yes. at the term, which is very sad because right. the baby at was the term. at term. Okay. And so the mother um, had an uneventful pregnancy all the way till 39 weeks. So if you know 37 weeks is considered full term, she's right. very, term, very much at term. Right. And so she had a uh, respiratory tract infection with a mild fever, about 100 degrees, and three uh -huh. days later she felt the baby stopped moving. Uh -huh. So she went to the hospital and did an ultrasound and confirmed the baby had already died. So the baby was induced and then they did an autopsy and right. they found a oral bacteria again. It's a different one now. This time it's called a Fusobacteria nucleatum, okay. which is another very common oral bacteria in the mouth. Uh, it, it was isolated as a pure culture from the baby's stomach and the lungs. So obviously okay. the baby ingested the contaminated fluid, amniotic fluid of the mother. Of the mother, okay. And then, uh, which yeah. caused the sepsis, because okay. the autopsy showed that the baby died of, of uh, Sepsis. So it appears again this came from the mouth, a different bacteria from the mouth. Right. And you were telling me that afterwards uh, there were, you, you think it was a pregnancy gingivitis that caused this. The gums appeared fairly healthy. Right. This is what's so surprising to us, especially when we saw it first time in 2006. Right. That was, this is such a dramatic case, we thought the mother must have very terrible gum. Mm -hmm. But when we examined her at postpartum, she had, she had a perfect gum, like yeah, no yeah, inflammation, yeah. no bleeding. And, um, but what she told us was that she, her gum bled excessively while she was pregnant. Right. So, so we concluded that she must have had uh, what's called a pregnancy-associated gingivitis. So because of the hormonal change during pregnancy, the 
gum can inflame right. very the gum easily. Become more inflamed. And pregnancy, but it's um, pregnancy associated. So it means that after the birth, the, the gum the will gum restore to normal. Right. right. So when you look examine her at the postpartum, you are not going to find anything. Right. And so this is a quite common. It affects anywhere between 30 to 75 percent of the pregnant population. Right. And the, the pregnancy gingivitis. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, the, for the second the stillbirth case, it's the same. When we examined the mother right. uh, at three weeks postpartum, she had a no gingival inflammation. Right. But she said that she had excessive gum bleeding during pregnancy. Right. So in both cases, I think these women had pregnancy-associated gingivitis, which is a very mild form of periodontal disease. And normally, people don't worry about it. Just right. say, oh, you know, it's uh, mild and it's temporary. It will go away. Don't worry about it. But here, we are showing that even these mild forms can cause severe damage to right. the fetus. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Might be an indication uh, that some of the newer tests would be mm -hmm. indicated more frequently, like the oral DNA, where you can actually see the uh, bacteria that are present in the mouth, the actual ones, as opposed to just looking at bleeding and, and, and not really knowing what is there. So that even in a, in a mouth that doesn't look that bad, periodontally, right. exactly. it actually tells you if there are certain bacteria, and there are only about 13 or 14 bacteria out of the several hundred in the mouth that are the causative problems. Uh, the bad bacteria, and and some of these newer tests will tell you which ones they are. Right, and right. If you have them, absolutely. Yeah. Right. I think that with the technology, we can detect uh, right. so many more bacteria. Um, so the the profile of periodontal bacteria is shifting. Like, yes. uh, so th th we, we should definitely take a look at the uh, oral bacterial load of certain species in the pregnant woman and. Right and see right. if uh, they correlate with the birth outcome. So what would you recommend for, for all pregnant women? Would you recommend that they definitely have their gums evaluated by their dentist? Absolutely. Um, I always say that for women, even before they think about getting pregnant, they should see their dentist to get their gum in shape. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, in the case of the stillbirth, uh, the mother contacted me after this happened and asked me what to do and my advice, that's my advice to her, is to see your dentist, Sometimes. get your gum in shape and so, and then the good news is that she later had another pregnancy and delivered a healthy baby boy and her gum bled a lot less during the second pregnancy. Wonderful. So. Well, Dr. Han, where would we get more information about this? Is there a website or is there, a, where, where would your papers be located? Where could we learn more about this? Um, I published a paper in Women's House magazine. Okay. I think it was in July 2011. Okay. And I, the title is Can Oral Bacteria Cause Pregnancy Complications? Okay. So it uh, described much of what we talked about today. Wonderful. Are there any last things you'd like to say before we close, Dr. Hahn? Just get your gum in shape <laughs> and, okay, and uh, okay. brush and floss because if uh, this is an uh, event that could lead to pregnancy complication, then if you just, you know, see see your dentist once during pregnancy, it's probably not enough. It's a daily maintenance is okay. the key. Okay, Dr. Han, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. And for all thank the research you. that you do. Yes. Thank you.